All right, so uh, one of the stories that Manaski launched yesterday was about uh, two commercials that are currently airing. Uh, interestingly, uh, one is for Anthony Brindisi and one is for Claudia Tenney. The furthermore uh, uh, interesting is the fact that it's the same business. You have one partner um, doing a Brindisi commercial and the other partner now doing a, a release yesterday, a, a commercial for Claudia Tenney. Stories up on our website. You can check it out, and the, the spots are in the in that. Uh, you can post watch them as well. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, check it out at our website at wibx 950com Claudia Tenney is on the line right now. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can I just? Who are you talking about running or driving the DPW truck? Cuomo? Uh, uh, no, no, no. I think uh, Mayor, <laughs> Mayor Mayor Paul Mary. Mayor Paul Mary. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like trying to imagine. Oh God. Well, the yeah, only the, time I'm ooh. coming to Utica is to plow. <laughs> yeah. But you have to understand, though, it's not too far of a stretch to see Mayor Paul Mary in a snowplow, right? Because he was no, injured that no, one time. I can see him doing that. He, yeah. He, he, I can't a, see Cuomo driving one. I can't either. I, I don't I don't think so. Although, but, he does do that. Doesn't he do that fishing thing where they go up fishing up north with legislators? I never thought I could see him fishing. Also, they say, Claudia, like you, I believe the governor drives a motorcycle. Yeah, I've never seen him actually drive it, though. Have you? Uh, no, no. But I'm sure there are. Photos. I have a stunt man to do it. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. I wonder if he's just got but like a license. The, I just think of the plow. I mean, I remember this is just a hearkening back to the good old days. But remember when there, when Mayor Hanna was in on his, I think the later one, and then we had this massive snowstorm, and there was snow everywhere, and 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 Mayor Hanna wanted to cut fun. You know, he didn't want to spend any more money. Yeah. And there was just snow everywhere, and uh, he got on out of some radio interview. It was probably with you, and he said. <laughs> He goes, Probably we not. don't need to plow the snow. What God put there, God will take away. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. So we could try that. Well, I do miss uh, the former uh, the former mayor. Those were some really exciting interviews. He also felt that the fire department was actually blaring their whistles and going by City Hall just to annoy him that there weren't any fires. Um, mm. Meanwhile, Utica was was burning. Oh, Lordy. He had uh, an interesting interview. Remember all the interview things? He was the original, like, kind of political reality TV show. He used to. Yeah, he was on 60 Minutes or something on one of those shows. Yeah. Oh, and he did no, his not own. To get right. By that, but. He did his own. Uh, he did his. He had his own weekly radio show. <laughs> Fireside um, chat. <laughs> it was. Well, it I used was. I laugh when he'd wild. pick up the phone, though. I'd, be, I'd watch these things. He'd pick up the phone. Mayor's office. This is the yeah. mayor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. I so, know you watch that, Bill. I know it. Oh, I, pure listen. Entertainment. I am. Um, I. It was. Uh, there were. I had a lot of. I have a lot of memories of uh, of Mary Hannah. Uh, they are good and bad. And of course, my favorite was when I sent off the fake press release that said he was retiring and and he was stepping down and and he threatened to have me arrested and it was oh, just. God. Crazy, crazy times. Uh, all right, so um, we have a commercial, and then we have another commercial. We have a business with two partners. One seems to be doing a Brindisi commercial. The other one seems to be doing your commercial. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, as as everybody knows, I've stood up against uh, this issue on China, stealing our jobs and moving them overseas long, seas long before I even ran for Congress, and... I, uh, I've done numerous op-ed pieces and issues on speaking out against NAFTA, which was signed into law by Bill Clinton, which was supported by a lot of, uh, even some Republicans. And I thought, it, you know, what it was doing, these trade deals were taking our jobs away, and I stood up uh, against this. I wrote articles. Even CNN uh, published an op-ed that I did before I took office in Congress on this issue in China. And when I walked into Cheryl Manufacturing on August, I'll just never forget the day. It was August 9th, 2016. It was a eureka moment. I said, this is exactly what we need to do. We need to bring our jobs back, particularly manufacturing. We need to have people making things. And so I became a big advocate for Cheryl and a lot of other companies, not just Cheryl. And then they presented an idea to me to reinduce the Barry Amendment, and we revised it a little, and we came up with a really great, catchy title called The Spoons Act, which is Su Support Procurement of Our Nation's Stainless Steel. And uh, it was tough to get it through the Republicans because, quite frankly, a lot of the Republicans do not 
we're, we're supportive of uh, some of the more democratic, what's now a democrat issue, which is globalism yeah. and supporting China, where the Republicans have now seen the light thanks to the leadership of President Trump. And, uh, you know, that was one of the reasons, uh, you know, that I supported President Trump is that he saw what was happening to our jobs and our communities, and he embraced the idea. And that's one of the reasons that I, you know, I put the Spoons Act in, and unfortunately some globalists that uh, actually it was the chairman now, now he's the uh, ranking member on the House Armed Services Committee. I got the Spoons Act in. It was a voice vote, which means it was unanimous, and it was pulled out at the last second by the by the chairman because uh, I don't know why. He, he yeah. thought it was uh, not a good bill, but everybody else did, and unfortunately the chairman has that power. So uh, Matt uh, Roberts and uh, Greg Owens have always been huge supporters. They were really grateful for the work. We got them into the White House. Uh, two times, two Made in America events, 17 and 18, the only company in New York to do that uh, for two years in a row. And uh, we got a lot of great things going for them because of my advocacy. So um, I, I think uh, Matt uh, did a great job on the ad. I think Greg, uh, you know, was I was surprised Greg would do an ad, but... Well, and uh, not only not, of mine as well. not only do an ad for Anthony Brindisi, but also... Um I think there's another commercial. The commercial that's currently running by uh, by Anthony Brindisi is uh, actually taped inside the uh, the Cheryl Manufacturing. It is odd to see both candidates in the same building. And you know, I mean, traditionally, what would happen is, you know, it's it's one of the you're, you pick one candidate or the other. But it it does seem that they have kind of opened their arms to both of you. I was a little surprised that that Greg agreed to do the ad, to be honest with you. Um, when he told me he wouldn't do anything uh, differently for me than for Anthony, um, I think it's, it's, it's unfortunate, and I think Matt and Greg felt uh, a little surprised by the ad that they did for Brindisi, so uh, they really wanted to come back and, and really advocate for me as well. And, uh, Greg's a supporter. I mean, I, it, he definitely doesn't endorse Brindisi in the ad. He just gives him uh, credit for getting the Spoons Act passed, but... Again, the Spoons Act uh, is really um, more of a messaging bill than it is a real substantive bill. I, I'm really glad that it's got passed, as I said. But at the same time, I'm not sure Spoons ever would have come to light had I not led the way, uh, because Brindisi has such a terrible record on China and on trade before uh, I came along. So I'm glad that he's been able to retrace my steps and do some of the good work. But now we need a leader to get back in Congress and, and rebuild our economy and uh, restore our way of life and stand up to the to the bullies who are trying to defund the police like Brindisi and all those other things. So um, I think, you know, he's supporting Joe Biden. He voted for him for speaker, the guy who has probably the worst record on uh, sucking up to China, for lack of a better term, than any other politician probably in America. Uh taking his son on Air Force Two officially to China. And then, what do you know, a couple of weeks later, Hunter has a $1.5 billion contract with Chinese with the Chinese government, state-owned enterprise. I mean, uh, so Brindisi's got a lot of uh, work to make up to cover up the fact that China is a big player in the Democratic side now. I mean, there's, I, you know, yep. Brindisi's supportive of Biden. So can I think I, that's probably possibly what it's what it's about. Can I ask you, though, that um, I, I understand that it's it's campaign talk to say that he's trying to defund police, but you also have a commercial that's running right Not now. Not campaign talk, of course. Well, you know that. I, I, well, I'm, a vote is a vote is a vote. You vote okay. to defund the police. You voted I, to defund I'm the watching police. It, I'm watching it on a TV station right now. Um, Sheriff Rob Machel is is completely endorsing Anthony Brindisi and saying that he is not against police, that he is not anti-police, and that he does not believe in funding police. What do you say to the sheriff? I, I'm very disappointed with the sheriff, as are uh, so many people who have contacted me about this. Like, Sheriff Machel's a Democrat. Uh, he, got, he, you know, I just am surprised that he would come out when just the state police, the state investigators, numerous other sheriffs in the district, individual police officers um, are all supporting our campaign because Brindisi voted to defund the police. He can come back now and claim, oh, I didn't really mean it. I didn't mean to vote to defund the police. Uh, and But now I'm going to try to put in a bill that doesn't really do anything and is never going to get passed so that I can run it at an ad and I can get the sheriff to support me. I, I'm very disappointed that the sheriff 
knows that. I've heard from numerous police officers around the district and around the state, actually, who were really disappointed with the sheriff we asked doing him, we, that when he knows we, that Brindisi hasn't stood up to a lot of the <laughs> violence and the negative the negative rhetoric coming out against our police. Uh, we asked him about it yesterday, and he stood by the endorsement saying that he, he knows that he's saying, these are his words, that he knows that Anthony Brindisi is, uh, is a friend to police. That's from... From the sheriff, I want to ask you one other quick thing before we. Well, did you ask him why he voted? Why Brindisi voted to defund the police? So I mean, this, is the George, and this is the George. This is the George Floyd. Uh, this is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Is that? Yes. Okay. So I wanted to ask you just one last question yes. on the uh, on the ad. You kind of alluded to uh, that Greg is it Greg Owens uh, from yes. uh, from Cheryl Manufacturing. Uh, that you're saying that that he was surprised at the ad that he was in. Are, are you saying that Brindisi, the producer of the Brindisi ad, or Brindisi himself, are you saying that he duped them into to doing that commercial? That he tricked them? I got a text message from Greg Owens that said, "Wow, the commercial didn't. I didn't think that that's the way it would turn out." I'm paraphrasing. Okay. I mean, uh, I mean, he said what he said. Right in the uh, right. It's not like they put words in his mouth. He he, and it doesn't seem like there was a big edit there. Obviously, they're going to take out. But uh, I think we'll ask him that question. I I'm going to try to get both of them on the radio to talk about it. This is a big race. Uh, the other part of this, uh, Claudia, is it's a big race. I don't think the Spoons Act itself is the biggest issue in the race. I Probably think not. The, yeah. You know, the idea of China uh, taking over, and this is just a, a very small part of it, uh, but I think that uh, what Cheryl is actually doing is really important, and I think there are a lot of companies around our region that I'd love to also highlight that are that are bringing jobs back and, and, and where they're strong on Made in America. That is a signature of mine and a signature of the president. Okay. You know, if you just, I mean, Brindisi's retracing my steps on a lot of issues, pretty much everything, so, uh, but I'm, I'm going to lead the way, and I think that's what people are seeing now. I didn't vote to impeach the president. I'm not you know, I'm not embarrassed to uh, talk about the president. I think the president's a leader, and I think the president is is uh, going to get reelected. And I think Brindisi knows that, and he's uh, he's got a. I mean, what Democrat is running ads with President Trump uh, in their bills? I mean, why he, wasn't he at the White House when the Spoons Act was signed into law? Yet? Well, he was at the White House yesterday uh, as the president uh, signed that big uh, Israeli. Uh, 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 Treaty or uh, whatever we want to call Abraham it, Accord. Uh, the Accord. Um, Abraham Accord. He yeah, was there, and was the it... president to have such leadership? And, and then, well, I want you, you know, to come out so magnanimous to invite people who voted to impeach him to okay. come All and, right. uh, All right. and vote against his uh, his agenda. But I mean, that's the president; he's a leader. Okay. Uh, one more. Yeah, I just want to go back to the George Floyd bill mm-hmm. because you you had mentioned this before. I, I've read through the description, the summary. I'm on Congress.gov right now. I don't see the part about defunding police. There's lowering the criminal intent standard from willful to knowing to reckless to convict a law enforcement officer for misconduct in federal prosecution, limits qualified immunity as a defense liability in private civil action, authorizes Department of Justice to issue subpoenas in investigations, uh, creates a national registry, national police misconduct registry to compile data on complaints and records of police misconduct, framework to prohibit racial profiling at the federal, state, and local levels, and new requirements for uh, law enforcement agencies, including report on uh, data on use of force incidents to obtain training in implicit uh, bias and racial profiling, et cetera. I don't understand yeah, the part it, about that that's well, defunding uh, the yeah, police. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to explain it again. What it does, it prohibits police departments, local, state, and, uh, and of any, on any level from reusing or accepting uh, supplies, surplus supplies from our military, which includes, and I, I read this off on your show, uh, all kinds of things. It could Hundreds of thousands were given to Norwich and the Binghamton Police Department uh, for uh, large uh, pieces of equipment, um, radar, resuscitators, first aid equipment. It amounts to millions of dollars alone just in uh, NY22, and we didn't even get into what the state police is using that is surplus military equipment. This is already equipment and supplies that have been paid for by the taxpayers that aren't being used by the military and are being repurposed and used uh, in our communities by our police forces. The bill prohibits uh, that from happening. 
And it's very vague on it, but it prohibited it from it. And so we went and looked up exactly how much it was. And in New York 22, it's about $3 million, and we don't have the access to what this, the state didn't uh, uh, reply to us. But we, that we didn't, the state also uses surplus military equipment. And uh, as you know, my son is in, in the Marines. A lot of equipment that the military doesn't use or is repurposed goes to our local police forces to save lives. I, I've talked to numerous police officers, sheriffs around the, around the district, ch- chiefs of police. Uh, there's a lot of these things that are helpful. They save lives. They make our community safer. And Anthony Brindisi voted to prevent that from happening. So it's worth millions of dollars. If you take millions of dollars that is coming to me from our military, as, as you could call it, a windfall, that's defunding our police. And he supported it and voted for it. Uh, look, he wouldn't be running so many ads and wouldn't have put in a bill that's mostly just a title if it weren't true. Uh, I'm going to let that be the... Uh, he knows he voted that way. I'll let that be the final word as we're out of time. Claudia, pre- uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll do it again soon. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, talk to you soon. The former Congresswoman, uh, Claudia Tenney.